Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Fire Up Michigan. My name is Scott Morgan Roth, appropriately named the Motor City Mad Mouth. Yes, Motown is my town, and I'm glad to have a few uh, other people on this broadcast as well. But I should let everybody know that this broadcast is also being seen live on Twitter, as well as LinkedIn and Facebook as well, as, along with the South Florida Tribune YouTube mm -hmm. channel. So with that said, I want to welcome the newest member to our crew, Will Vogel. I work with Will over at Sideline Sports. Welcome to the show, Will. Glad to have you. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. And same with George and Jeremy. I appreciate it. Can't wait to get going. Well, we will momentarily. And that lead your good segue to George Icorn. Thank you, Will Vogue. You might be taking my job before it's over. George, welcome back. <laughs> good to be here, guys. So looking forward to a new Fire Up Michigan episode. And last but not least, Smoking Jeremy. B. Good evening, everybody. Glad to be back. Ready to talk some sports. It, it's always fun with you guys. We never know which way we're going. No, we really never do. But the one, thing, <laughs> the one thing I want to talk about, which I'm really not happy I have to do, but it's part of what we have to do, is I do want to wish our condolences to the Shane family. As Don Shane passed away late last week at the age of 70. I've, he worked in the Metro Detroit market for like 29 years or so. And I had the good privilege crossing paths a little bit here and there. I didn't see him a lot because he was doing this thing and I did. We talked a little bit here and there. Of course, when you go, well, I saw him mainly at Pistons and Lions games since I was the Oakland County person and George mainly worked Wayne County. So, but rest in peace, Don. George, you have any thoughts about Don Shane? Yeah, Don was... Uh quite a character i mean he was um i liked him because he was not afraid to go out and cover things and i know that it's a temptation by some people some sports anchors i'm referring to to just sit back and sit in the studio and get all your tape and uh and write out your sports cast that's that's all good at, well and good but donnie was somebody that would come out to the games he especially loved color color covering the pistons and the lions I saw him mostly at Pistons and Lions games. And, you know, his wife, Mona, well, a lot of times his wife was with him too, which I thought was kind of classy. I mean, not every guy can do that, bring their wife or girlfriend when they cover games. But um, we know how important that, that was to Donnie. And, you know, he started at Channel 4, and he went away for a little bit, and they brought him back. And the guy that actually brought him back is a friend of mine named John Swickla. John Swickla works for uh, uh, Mark Hackle in the Macomb County office now, but Swickla is the one that Swickla was executive producer at Channel Seven, and he's the one that uh, persuaded them to bring Donnie back to Detroit after some short stints he had in was it Boston and Chicago, I think. Um, right. But Don Don worked hard. Don the three guys that I think of with Donnie are that he always loved talking to Sparky Anderson, Chuck Daly, and uh, Bo Schembechler. Those are the three favorites I think Don had and did great interviews. So, uh, yeah. yeah, my sympathy too as well, Scott. And guys. Yeah, who in their right mind wouldn't want to work with Sparky Anderson, who I worked with a lot, and if, and Chuck Daly was great. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Bo Schembechler, I didn't get to know him, so I can't really mention yeah. the comment on that. So, yeah, and, 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 you know, seeing Don pass away at 70 reminded me of another great – Detroit sports broadcaster was Fred McLeod. I know he went over to Cleveland to do the Cavaliers, but you know, Fred McLeod was just great. And his wife yeah. was a sweet lady too. So, you know, it's, and these guys here, you know, they didn't make it to their eighties, but to me, they're always, but they were personalities that were totally off the uh, unreal. Yeah. And I, and I hate talking about these things because we lost Dean Howe respected writer, a uh, friend of yours and mine, Scott, a couple weeks ago. Right. And over the years, oh, my God, Drew Sharp and Corky Meineke and Shelby Struther. Uh, we, Detroit's been, it seems like Detroit's been hit hard with a lot of early deaths of their sports uh, media people. Yeah, well, it's funny how you mentioned those names. I got to, well, Drew Sharp, I knew him really, really well. And you also mentioned Shelby Struther and Corky Meineke. Oh, they were just unbelievable. Yeah, I know you, you they were, yep. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, I went to, I think, Corky Meineke's funeral a while back. So, you know, I know Will and Jeremy, you don't aren't familiar with these individuals, but when George talks about his book later on in the show, 
you'll find out that Detroit has an incredible amount of broadcasters, writers, and so forth that were just truly remarkable to work with. And I know my buddy Leo Martinozzi recently retired, so he's not dead. But Dean Howe was a guy I really thoroughly enjoyed working with. Those oh, yeah. I mean, you know, the thing is, Will and Jeremy, mm-hmm. you know, or when I made the Pontiac Silver Dome my football home, I got to know these guys all the time. I I, I don't I didn't miss the Lions guys. I really never did. So all right. Well, with that said, let me go over a brief list of topics. Pretty straightforward. We're talking this is Detroit Tigers talk is what we're gonna talk about. So and we'll Yay. leave what <laughs> and there you, go. you got the wrong uh, cat here. Uh, oh no. I this is always the right cat on my head. Okay, well, we're talking about another cat called the Tigers. So. And we're going to start off with KZ Mai being put on the 60-day injured list. It's a shame. Number one pick overall in the draft. You know that there's a tremendous amount of potential with this guy if you just keep him healthy. So, you know what, Jeremy, lead off. Well, congratulations to the Detroit Tigers for having their uh, two-time Super Bowl MVP. They drafted Patrick Mahomes as a pitcher. Right. Not only that, but, you know, the Tigers do have a rich history. They've had some great players over the years going all the way back. You're talking about the Georgia Peach and Ty Cobb. you got Charlie Geringer, Hank Greenberg, Al Kaline, Willie Horton, who ended up being an excellent batting coach as well. We've had a rich history. Sparky Anderson, heck, I, I've met him too. Met him, Dan Petrie, Jack Morris, Kirk Gibson, and Cecil Fielder. That's who I've met in my lifetime. And I think that's a pretty good name list to have for somebody that's not really anybody in the sports world yet. <laughs> but as far as Casey Mize, many observations. Uh, on Casey Mize, you know, his health is really what held him back. He has a lot of talent. He can really do a lot of stuff. He can spin that rock when, when he's healthy. But you know what? If you're not healthy, you're not available. If you're not available, you should be gone. Well, he is gone, but I get they, you're not going to get rid of the number one pick in the draft. You just Those are some things you have to deal with. And, uh, you know, I hate to, when you talk about top picks, the one that comes to mind is Steven Strasburg of the Nationals. I mean, my God. When you think about what this guy had coming out of college, and he's had some decent years over with Washington, but injuries have really derailed Steven Strasburg's career. So, George, where do you want to go with this? Well, I, I you know, Casey Mize, yeah, a lot of potential. Obviously, a number one pick, like you said, Scott. Um, the Tigers really, really counted on him. Uh, by now, you would have figured he was going to be uh, probably at least the number three, maybe even – the closing in on the number two guy, at least this coming season. I mean, in, in you, you wanted it to be that way. Well, it's not going to be that way, but for Casey Mize to disclose in Lakeland, Florida, that he also had back surgery. I'm a little bit put out by that because um, I don't know if the tigers, I assume the tigers knew about it and why they decided to put a media clamp on that is beyond me. Um, and granted, the major surgery was the Tommy John surgery he had, but now he comes to Lakeland and says, oh, by the way, guys, when he met the press, um, if you didn't know it, I had back surgery too. Oh, okay. Bam. Put him on the 60-day disabled list, and bam, they're probably not going to, we're not going to see him all this year. I was a little put out by that. There could be privacy reasons. I don't know what the reasons were, but I'm sorry, he's not been uh, obviously what they wanted, and uh, I hope he's not injury prone. But the start of his career has not been good, Scott. Okay, well, yeah, I agree with George. Hiding that you had back surgery until now is kind of a red flag to the media and the organization. It doesn't look good on you and your team. And then the press can say, "Oh, breaking news! We just found out this guy had surgery." Boom, next thing you know, Tiger's are like, oh, wait, he had surgery, 60-day IL. Um, he was 0-1 last year with a uh, 5.40 ERA in two starts last year, and he's 7-13 with a 4.29 ERA in 39 starts over three seasons. So this guy has not played like a number one pick, unfortunately. He 
he's playing like a Strasburg who has spurts of good, but mainly injury prone. But um, the sad thing is like this guy was touted as the best pitcher in his class. Hence he was a number one pick coming out of Auburn. And right. um, I thought he was going to be the number one or number two with the Tigers when he got drafted, right. because I thought he was going to be like the Verlander of the Tigers, mm -hmm. lead him to a lot of wins, do a lot of work, be the future, the uh, future face of the franchise. But his career, like you guys have stated, has not turned out what we, no. the media, Tigers fans, and MLB fans expected so far. You know what? Well, I like the fact that you mentioned Justin Verlander. I had Justin Verlander right at the top of my head. You know, a guy was a flamethrower, could blow you away. But unfortunately, you know, now Jack Morris – beginning of his career he had some injuries but he worked through it so well we'll have to see how this thing with mice plays out so all right well, let's go to the next thing here jeremy what tell yes, me sir. the tigers player which will have a breakout year i think it's riley green you know we can't really count on miggy for too much i think they're going to platoon him as the dh going forward uh, his mobility is limited due to all the injuries he's had over the years. He does. He, everybody, I hear the same story every preseason. Oh, he looks in the best shape we've ever seen. I was like, no, he doesn't look like the first year he was here. I mean, he's, he's at least 20 pounds over that. So that was the best shape he ever was. And that was the only year I think he played almost the entire season. Everything else has been, he's missed 10 games here, 20 games there. He's missed five games here, five games there. And then he's missed half a season. The one year wasn't it the oblique? The when he came back early in the the sec uh, after he had it the first year, and he got hurt and almost missed like two thirds of the season. Mm -hmm. So as long as he stays healthy and they're platooning him as a DH, and every once in a blue moon when the first baseman needs a break, put him out there. I'm good with it. Yeah, George. Well, Scott and guys, I, the one that I hope for is Jake Rogers. And, and Scott, I remember that story. You wrote that in-depth article on him for the Monitor back in the day. And uh, Jake, also another Tommy John surgery coming back from that is never easy. But he hit a home run the other day oh. down in Lakeland. And uh, they need Jake Rogers. Jake Rogers, uh, you know, is uh, is has a lot of potential. That's why they got him in that trade. He has a lot of potential, and he really was starting to come into his own that second half of the season, not last season, but the year before when he when he broke into the big leagues. And Jake uh, can really help solidify things, although, obviously, I'm not bypassing Eric Haas. Haas you know, he's a great, good catcher, good hitter, but not as good as a defensive catcher that Rodgers is. So I guess that would be my choice is I'm looking for a breakout year from Jake Rogers and anything above the 250, 260 batting would be good with me because like I said, he is coming back from that very tough Tommy John surgery. Yeah. Amazingly enough, I thought the same thing. So I want to go over some other information so that people know how they can get follow us. First of all, look at my screen and you're on Twitter at Tribune South is the way they go. So, and our website is www.southfordertribune.com as well. But just, you know, Fire Up can be heard on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcast. So check us out. We do it. It goes all over the place. Those are the four main ones. Also, please hit the red subscribe button on YouTube, South Florida Tribune. We're striving for a thousand subscribers. And yes, Jeremy, you can put your finger up in a moment after I get this out. Okay. Want to be a guest? Send topic ideas to South Florida Tribune at gmail.com. And I will go out there and pair you with the right show that we have. All right, Jeremy. And once you subscribe, don't forget to hit that like button and also share it with any sports fans you have. If they're Michigan-based fans, this is the perfect show to share. If there are football fans, we have Inside the Pigskin, this show, a Fire Up Wisconsin. We have so many shows out there, it, it's crazy. Just There's something for every type of sports fan. There you go. All right, well, you get a crack at the Tigers player that will have a breakout. So I think this kid's going to be the – 
future franchise face of the franchise for the Detroit Tigers, Spencer Torkelson. I met this guy when he was with the USA team in Charlotte. Really humble kid, really humble guy, really nice guy. Batting average last year was .203. He had eight home runs and 28 RBIs. Yeah, it was limited, but you know what? I think this kid's going to be an amazing player. He was drafted high for a reason. This kid has shown flashes of greatness, and um, I think he um, is like like when you think of Detroit players, you th- you I can see like his face being that face of the franchise, like an Al Kaline. Jack Morris, like what he he's the new leader. I'm sure, Maggie's still there, and he's the clubhouse leader. And he's the veteran on the team, but I think Torkelson will take the reins of this. Will be my team going forward sooner or later. You know, I don't think anybody can go wrong with Jake Rogers or Spencer Torkelson. I really don't. I, either way, you're going to go. I think the Tigers got a new hitting coach, right, George? So yeah, they did. Yeah, and hopefully. He'll learn a little something from the new hitting coach with Torkelson, Rogers. I don't think it's going to run either way. All right, now the next one, comeback player of the year. Okay, Jeremy. Um, Who's that? Uh, Tariq Black, the pitcher that was hurt most of the season last year? Scooble, wasn't it? Scoop. There was Terrence Scooble. and Scooble. Spencer Turnbull. And Spencer Turnbull, both of them. You know, they should be the aces on this staff with what we have on the roster because that if they get into the form like they were doing just before they got hurt because both of them were pitching fan- fantastic, if they get to form and become the one and two, this pitching roster doesn't look so bad. If they're stuck in that two and three or the three and four, that's why I said all off season we need better back end of the rotation in the starting and we needed better middle relievers and a closer that doesn't like to have friends on the base path. (laughs) George? I'm going to go with Jonathan Scope. Uh, Jonathan did not have a good year last year. Um, He took this offseason very seriously. He got in shape. Uh, He changed his diet and went on a good exercise regime. He lost, like I said, some pounds. And from all accounts I'm hearing, he looks really, really good. <laughs> the Tigers need him. He's a second baseman. He's a veteran. And just like Javier uh, at, at shortstop, I mean, these guys were brought in to, to solidify this young team. And I'm looking for Scope to, to be the comeback player because the Tigers need him. They need his glove and they need his bat at the same time. All right, well. My guy is Austin Meadows. This guy was a beast with the Rays. The Pirates made a mistake by trading him to the Rays, and then the Rays, I think, made a mistake, even though they got, I think, Paredes, but Meadows is the better player of the two. Meadows was a really good player for the Rays, very underrated, but he was talked about. He was talked about in the MLB, awesome as. I was fortunate to see him play in the minors. He hit three home runs against the Charlotte Knights when I got to see him play one night. This guy, when healthy, is really good. Unfortunately, his first year with the Tiger, he left Tigers. He left with vertigo and COVID nineteen, which is unfortunate. Vertigo is not fun. It it's terrible. COVID nineteen was not fun either. Is not fun either. And then he returned, but then only to have tendonitis in his Achilles, which is not good for a guy who's twenty seven years old. You should not be having that when you're that young. And last year, when he did play, he had a .250 batting average, zero home runs, zero RBIs, and a .675 OPS. This guy, I think, will be one of the breakout players, not only for the Tigers, for Mm -hmm. the MLB, because this guy has shown when he was with Tampa that this guy is a caliber baseball player and was a leader on that team, and I think he could be a leader on the Tigers. Yeah, early return's not good there, but you know what, Will? You know, you have A.J. Hinch. Of course, you know Scott Harris, the, general, the president, is going to be watching over him big time. So I think Scott Harris is going to have a quick hook for guys that aren't doing what they got to do. I'm going to say that my comeback player, I was at Edwin Rodriguez, 
or Edward Rodriguez. I'm not sure which one it is. Edwin. Edwin Rodriguez. They, Tigers spent a lot of money for him last year in free agency. They need him to have a really good year, uh, especially to be a, a top arm in that rotation they do. And you know what? Spencer Turnbull, to me, I believe he threw that no-hitter. Is that correct for the Tigers? Yes. Yep. Yes. And I'll never forget what happened that when I asked Don Mattingly during a media availability, there were so many throw, no-hitters thrown at that time, and Don Mattingly thought everything, that a lot of this was bad for baseball. And I'll never forget the response it got on Twitter with my colleague Craig Mission. At, at that time, my comments in the background went viral, and there were 392,000 people that actually heard my voice talking about the amount of no-hitters. And Spencer Turnbull was the one that had the last one. And I was actually thinking about going on to Marlins media availability before. Waited a day later. And then what do you think? Spence throws that no hitter. So, uh, you know, I got to go with Spencer Turnbull or Edwin Rodriguez. The Tigers need some pitching and they need it in the worst way. But you know what, though, Will? There's no way I would even debate against you on Austin Meadows. They need him in the worst way. And the last thing you need is to really have a trade that looks so one-sided where you look really, really bad. And on the surface right now, Perini's for Meadows, the Rays got the best of it early, but there could be, this could be one of those delayed reactions. So I'd like everybody's answers there. So let's go to our final topic of the night, the addition of Matt Boyd. And also I want to go back to Jake Rogers returning. We could continue on that, but let's talk about the addition of Matt Boyd. The Tigers brought him back, Jeremy. That's going to help. That's going to help solidify the back end of that rotation. And if he's not fitting as a starter, because you know he had very much a lot of inconsistencies early on in his career in the Tigers, they could actually move him to mid reliever and be somebody that can eat up innings when a pitcher get, starts to struggle in the third or fourth inning. They could bring him in to stretch it to that seventh, eighth inning because he has the stamina to do that if he's being consistent. So it all depends on how he does starting. If he ends up being a consistent starter, I could see him end up being the fourth because there was only two signings last year that I absolutely hated. And the one was the pitcher you mentioned. The other one is that shortstop that's so aggressive and swings badly. Ugh. Okay. Oh, all right. I'll, I'll mimic you, Jeremy. Ugh. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. I don't even want to say his name. I'll be there by his. Yeah. The one that, that one makes me throw up a little bit in my mouth when I say it. Well, that's okay. <laughs> now, Jeremy, that's called a TMI. So don't worry about that part of it. There might be some people eating dinner, so they don't really need to. Clean it <laughs> it's past now, dinner time. Javier Baez, though, I'm glad you brought him up. George, continue on, please. Now, Matthew Boyd, I've always been a Matthew Boyd fan. I'm looking for 12 wins. If I can get 12 wins out of Matt Boyd this season, then the Tigers have some potential. And, and the reason I say that is because, you know, interesting enough, he went to um, San Francisco. And interesting enough, Chris Illich hired, guess who, from San, San Francisco to yeah. be the president of baseball operations, Scott Harris. So, you know, and again, again, it, it, maybe it's a hunch. Maybe it's something that Scott saw in Matt Boyd that he liked last year on the Giants team. All I'm saying is that, to me, that's a positive at least, you know, that Scott wanted to bring Matthew back to Detroit. On a personal note, it's amazing what him and his wife have done and how they've helped out uh, the uh, uh, continent of Africa with their many trips over there to help underprivileged children and families that are in need. That, that's a big thing off the field with Matt Boyd. But between the lines, between the stripes, whatever we want to say, he is a class guy on the field as well. I'm only hoping for good things, although I do agree with Jeremy, if he does not have the right stuff as a starter, then yes, he can be an innings eater in middle relief. I do agree with you on that one, Jeremy. Okay. Uh, George, you know, Jake Rogers, I'm bringing it back in here. And, you know, I guess we can both echo the thoughts that you want to see some sort of return on that Verlander trade. You really do. And I think Jake Rogers represents your best opportunity to do that. Otherwise that was a bad trade. There were a couple of those trades that were really, you know, ended up not looking so well. And that was the big one, of course, Verlander. And Jake Rogers is, you know, it's funny. They make fun of him with his little mustache. You know, he's got his little mustache thing going. And 
he 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 he's loose. He's you could tell that the 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 players around him like him, and you know they're goofing around with him and that down in Lakeland. I've been reading the stories and catching the 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 blurbs on television, and uh, I'm with you, Scott. I mean, you know, you got to show something for that trade. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? When I interviewed him, what a real likable guy. I, he really is a great kid. All right, well. So I think the addition of Matt Boyd's really good for Detroit because you have a familiar face who's familiar with that ballpark, that scenery, that team, right. and having Scott Harris with him also again when he was with San Francisco, it's good. Familiar, familiarity is always good. Right. Whether when whether you know you're friends with the GM or you're friends with the coach or you know someone in the organization, it's good. And I bet fans are going to be really happy because his best years were with Detroit. And, hey, who wouldn't like a homecoming coming back to the, the team you were best with? I wouldn't. I would love it. Um, he will definitely be competing with Manning, Rodriguez, Turnbull, for sure, for – one of the pitching spots and i think he'll definitely be in that cycle of pitchers and um he's been quoting and saying his baseball's uh, best baseball is ahead of him and uh, i don't blame him and i agree with george your best years were with detroit you're familiar with this ballpark like i said i i i don't see anything negative i think he's only going to be helpful to the team well, you know, Will, it's funny how you say familiarity. I would call it the familiarity factor, and that's what it is. You know, when somebody believes in you, my goodness, you know, it's a great thing, isn't it? And you have the Harris Boyd thing. You know, it's hard to tell. I mean, I, I, you know, nowadays pitchers are judged by a quality start with, what, five, six, seven innings is what they are. I mean, and remember when we were growing up, George, if you didn't throw a complete game, you were basically a bum. <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh! You really were. Well, this is really no exaggeration. W. Well, it really isn't. But you know, I mean, that was the norm back then. It really, really was. Complete games were not a foreign language. Well, they it just was uh, unreal. It's the but, truth, yeah. Well, no, I know. I mean, you know, I I know you're a big steadfast researcher. If I stick you on it and tell me how many complete games, I guarantee you won't. You won't get there fast enough in your mind to be able to do it. And don't one day I may put you have you do that at some point. But familiarity factor is where you really nailed it there. Well, you really, really. Did. I appreciate. It. Yeah, and that's what it comes down. I like Matt Boyd, but I do want to see some return on the Jake Rogers trade. And I'm going to tell you one thing about Jake Rogers. Kid's got a cannon for an arm. Yes, he really most does. definitely. Yeah, the way he throws people out, it's unreal. So. Um, so, so I just want to reiterate here, okay, that Fire Up Michigan can be heard on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcast. So please hit the red subscribe button on YouTube, South Florida Tribune. We're striving for a 1,000 subscribers. My goodness. Okay, want to be a guest on the show? Send us some topic ideas to South Florida Tribune at gmail.com. We'll pair you where we need to go. All right. So go ahead, Jeremy. Give us the other thing that goes with that, my friend. Well, there is the South Florida Tribune.com, you know, where writers like George and myself are listed under the Motor City Tribune. Scott Morgan Roth is listed there because he writes about everybody because that's what he does. And who knows, one day soon you might see something from Will Vogel on there. Also, I'm not only an editorial, so I'm a consultant to the company. That being said, you can find me at kneecap well, biting. We, we, we got parting shots. I want you to talk about oh. it. That doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll let you say it again. That's okay. You're just getting warmed up for the ending. That's okay. So uh, share it. All that business. Go ahead. Don't worry about it. Remember that? Of course you remember. Share yeah. It. Yeah. Give me Don't that. forget to like, subscribe, and share. Get it out there to all the sports fans. But that being said, my parting shot is let's just see some meaningful baseball. And there's one thing that's going to be less familiar about this ballpark is they moved the, all the fences in 10 feet, and now they're only 7 feet tall. So there's not going to be a lot of familiarity. And those line drives that were hitting the top of the top of the, the, the fence, 
they're going to be going over now because it's not a nine foot fence. Okay. All right, George. Yeah. I, you kind of stole my thunder bro, a little bit. I, 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 a couple of things stand out to me and that is my parting shot is the changes that Scott Harris and, and, and Chris Illich are making. And Jeremy, you hit on the first one I was going to talk about is the fences. The second one is brand new lighting. Finally, the stadium that was built, I believe, and christened in 2000 is 23 years old already. Hard to believe, Comerica Park. Oh. But they put brand new lights in. They had helicopters uh, take the lights out uh, during the winter and install the new lights. Um, uh, they're doing some things for the fans. They're moving the weekday games to 640 instead of 710 p.m. And then also, I know this is just a, a small thing, but the Tigers always limit their giveaways to the first 10,000 fans. Guess what? After much complaining by George Icorn and others like me, they increased it to 15,000. So the first 15,000 fans now this year will get the goodies, such as the Miguel Cabrera bobblehead and other, other gifts that they give to the fans. So it's a small step, but a step in the right direction. I like what Scott Harris and the company is doing. Okay, well, we have your parting shots, please. My parting shot, I've got one real, two real quick. Thank you sure. for having me again, Scott. I really do appreciate it. It's awesome Not to be on job. here with you, gentlemen. It's always awesome. Also, look out for these breakout players in the MLB season. Some of them are down in the minors, but some of them most likely will come out. The guys I'm talking about are Corbin Carroll for the Arizona Diamondbacks, Francisco Alvarez with the Mets, Ellie De La Cruz with the Reds, Jordan Walker with the Cardinals, um, Gunnar Henderson with the Orioles, Tristan Cassis with the Red Sox, Anthony Volpe with the Yankees, and Josh Jung with the Rangers. Those guys are going to be good. So look out for those names. And there's plenty more, but those are some of the big names you should look out for that will come up either this year, late this year, May make an opening day roster, maybe not. Yankees are expecting Volpe up, all-star break. But look out for these names, I tell you. And there's many more. And there's one more name I forgot to put on there. I'm sorry. Andrew Painter, 18, I think he's an 18-year-old kid playing for the Phillies in spring training, making his debut on Wednesday. They they say this kid throws gas. Okay. Pretty good. I enjoy that. Anytime I can learn some, I'm all ears. All right. Well, my parting shot, believe it or not, is not a baseball one. Anyone that thinks the Pistons should be tanking for the number one choice, you can't forget that the NBA does have a draft lottery. doesn't guarantee you get the top pick. Now, if the Pistons are bad because they're bad, they have no talent, I get it. But please, folks, don't do that. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't say they don't have talent. They're in the top five in scoring. It's just the problem is they're the bottom two in defense. All right, but my point is, is <laughs> about tanking, okay, don't do it. Many, many years ago, you got away with tanking where you're assured of getting a one or two pick. Not happening. A lot more leagues are going to the lottery system. The NHL has it. I think MLB now has it. And, of course, the NBA has had it. The only one right, that right. You're right, Scott. Is the NFL. So, no, I mean, I, I don't believe in tanking. I really think it's – cheating your customer base anyways you got to give it your best shot we all know the nba is struggling there's a load management because their popularity is at an all-time low you don't believe me judged by the all-star game when you know 4.59 million people watch it down 20 some odd percent so but no i don't believe in taking and i hope the pistons don't go that route so what a nice show we had here tonight really enjoy will vogel will vogel will be coming on here more often I can assure you that on this show, you know, I work with him on Basket Bros, and he does a really good job putting that show together. And you never know, we might carry over some basketball topics to fire up Michigan as well, because obviously there's a pretty good history in Detroit as well. And I know Will will easily fit into that as well. As Will's learning, you got to be a chameleon in our industry, anyways. You got to be able to yeah. talk about everything. And act number one, Will, was a really good one. So looking forward to seeing Thank more. You, so Thank with you, that sir. said, okay, Jeremy, I know you were ahead of things about how to get all of you, so now you can really get ahead, and you get it. We call it a replay. 
Go yeah, ahead. I get I get a do over a mulligan. That being said, you can find George and I on the South Florida Tribune.com page under the Motor City Tribune heading as a list of authors. I'm also a consultant. That way you can look at our articles and read what we have to say about the, you know, George more about the Tigers than I do. I'm only going to have every now and then. <laughs> that being said, I do write about the Lions a lot. I also have my my YouTube channel, which is Kneecap Biting with Smoking Jeremy B. I have two shows a week during the off season. Every other Wednesday, I do the NFL Roundtable. You may see Will Vogel there from time to time. And I also have on Fridays, the Friday Night Man Cave Chat. And then anytime that Scott needs me, I'm on any one of his shows on the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. Well, I got news for you, Jeremy. You're good. I found you from another network, and I guess I should be thrown in jail for grand larceny, snapping you up. <laughs> I apologize for nothing. All right. With that said, Will Vogel, everybody know how you get a hold of yourself as well. Yes. You guys can find me on Sideline Sports. Um, you can find me here on Monday nights whenever Scott needs me. Right. Wednesday nights, I'm on Jeremy B's NFL round table. Um, Thursday nights, I'm away from sideline and away from South Florida Tribune. It's a show called The Sip Off, hosted by Megan Price. And then Sunday, I'm back on um, the Sideline Sports Network, Baskin at me, Scott, uh, Jay, Jacob, and sometimes Dom Derubis. Great show, too. George Eichhorn contributes there every once in a while on. Yes, yes, he does. Yes, he does. So, he's at, so, all right, George, go ahead. Detroit Sports Broadcasters on the air. We talked about the late Don Shane. Uh, my picture with Don Shane, there's only one, and he is interviewing of one of the greatest athletes of all time by the name of Tiger Woods. And I look back at this book, and I'm not trying to brag, but I like the fact that I've got pictures of Ted Williams, Muhammad Ali, Jimmy Connors, Tiger Woods, Gordie Howe, Al Kaline. This book is not just about sports broadcasters. It's about the history of sports also in Detroit, because a lot of those people that I mentioned were interviewed. And Scott, you, Scott Morganoff interviewed two of those, and that's Jimmy Connors and Muhammad Ali. There's a link to my book at the South Florida Tribune website under the Motor City Tribune, as Jeremy <coughs> mentioned at the end of my column. I'll have a little link there. And uh, it's a great gift if, if you're interested. You can also reach me on Yahoo at GICorn at Yahoo.com or on Twitter at SandGSports99. And also you can read me in the pages of the Detroit Monitor. You can find me at Fire Up Michigan, 108 Stitches, Sports Exchange, wherever Scott needs, uh, needs me. And I'm happy to contribute. So great being here. Doesn't hurt that I've only worked with you 43 years and we started at ABC. <laughs> That's true. I, you know, I, I drag George around wherever I go. So I'm <laughs> glad for somebody that I can drag him or whatever I, I end up doing. All right. Well, last but not least, me. You see my, if you're watching the show here via Twitter, Facebook, YouTube channel, you'll find that the Twitter information is at Tribune South. And LinkedIn, I should point out as well. The website's www.southfloridatribune.com. You can email us at southfloridatribune at gmail.com. Please subscribe to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. We obviously want to reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers, and I'm confident in due time we will as we continue to work very diligently to put out the best content, sports and non-sports related content that we can do. So, you know, we like, we hope we can have your support out there, but we appreciate those that are subscribed and, and pay attention to what we're doing. It really means a lot to have a good fan base as well as I do the best I can to find the best possible talent so that we can all have an opportunity to express ourselves in a very dignified way with a lot of integrity where our opinions mean an awful lot. Also special shout out to Candy Ebling who does an unbelievable job with, with the website and she appears on a lot of broadcasts as well. She actually appears on Chicks and Salsa. And we also, I want to point out that we're very delayed with our partnership at Sideline Sports, <laughs> led by JB Wills, a part of it, Jacob Krishner, Jennifer Lewis, Jay, and, and the list goes on and on. And Jordan 
J Jordan Long. You know, too many, a lot to mention. Don't want to leave anybody out, but these are the ones I get, I've worked with the most, I should say. And Will Vogel, obviously, you know, what can I say? Our goal is to make sure that we provide talent from not only our end, but theirs as well. And you know what makes it good about pairing up with them? We don't have to cancel, cancel shows because we have so many moving parts that are very versatile. So, again, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of Fire Up Michigan called Detroit Tigers Talk. We look forward to the next episode. But meanwhile, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And so on behalf of Will Vogel, Smoking Jeremy B., George Icorn, my name is Scott Morgan, around the Motor City Mavo. Thank you for joining on this uh, Fire Up Michigan. And following us tonight will be Fire Up Wisconsin. So Jeremy is going to go over there with me. We're going to have Candy Ebling. We're also going to have Eric Cat. So meanwhile, thank you very much for joining us, everybody. Have a good night, and we'll see you next week.